chapters fourteen through seventeen of the gospel according to john this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot o r g recording by mark penfold the gospel according to john from the new testament in modern speech translated by richard francis weymouth chapters fourteen through seventeen chapter fourteen let not your hearts be troubled trust in god trust in me also in my father's house there are many resting places were it otherwise i would have told you for i am going to make ready a place for you and if i go and make ready a place for you i will return and take you to be with me that where i am you also may be and where i am going you all know the way master said thomas we do not know where you are going in what sense do we know the way i am the way replied jesus and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me if you all of you knew me you would fully know my father also from this time forward you know him and have seen him master said philip cause us to see the father that is all we need have i been so long among you jesus answered and yet you philip do not know me he who has seen me has seen the father how can you ask me cause us to see the father do you not believe that i am in the father and that the father is in me the things that i tell you all i do not speak on my own authority but the Father dwelling within me carries on his own work. Believe me, all of you, that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me, or, at any rate, believe me because of what I do. In most solemn truth I tell you that he who trusts in me, the things which I do he shall do also, and greater things than these he shall do, because I am going to the Father. And whatever any of you ask in my name, I will do, in order that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you make any request of me in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be forever with you, the Spirit of Truth. That Spirit the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. You know him, because he remains by your side and is in you i will not leave you bereaved i am coming to you yet a little while and the world will see me no more but you will see me because i live you also shall live at that time you will know that i am in my father and that you are in me and that i am in you he who has my commandments and obeys them he it is who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and i will love him and will clearly reveal myself to him judas not the iscariot asked master how is it that you will reveal yourself clearly to us and not to the world if any one loves me replied jesus he will obey my teaching and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him he who has no love for me does not obey my teaching and yet the teaching to which you are listening is not mine but is the teaching of the father who sent me all this i have spoken to you while still with you but the advocate the holy spirit whom the father will send at my request will teach you everything and will bring to your memories all that i have said to you peace i leave with you my own peace i give to you it is not as the world gives its greetings that i give you peace let not your hearts be troubled or dismayed you heard me say to you i am going away and yet i am coming to you if you loved me you would have rejoiced because i am going to the father for the father is greater than i am i have now told you before it comes to pass that when it has come to pass you may believe in future i shall not talk much with you for the prince of this world is coming and yet in me he has nothing 
but it is in order that the world may know that i love the father and that it is in obedience to the command which the father gave me that i thus act rise let us be going chapter fifteen i am the vine the true vine and my father is the vine dresser every branch in me if it bears no fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit already you are cleansed through the teaching which i have given you continue in me and let me continue in you just as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself that is if it does not continue in the vine so neither can you if you do not continue in me i am the vine you are the branches he who continues in me and in whom i continue bears abundant fruit for apart from me you can do nothing if any one does not continue in me he is like the unfruitful branch which is at once thrown away and then withers up such branches they gather up and throw into the fire and they are burned if you continue in me and my sayings continue in you ask what you will and it shall be done for you by this is god glorified by your bearing abundant fruit and thus being true disciples of mine as the father has loved me i have also loved you continue in my love if you obey my commands you will continue in my love as i have obeyed my father's commands and continue in his love these things i have spoken to you in order that i may have joy in you and that your joy may become perfect this is my commandment to you to love one another as i have loved you no one has greater love than this a man laying down his life for his friends you are my friends if you do what i command you no longer do i call you servants because a servant does not know what his master is doing but i have called you friends because all that i have heard from the father i have made known to you it is not you who chose me but it is i who chose you and appointed you that you might go and be fruitful and that your fruit might remain so that whatever petition you present to the father in my name he may give you thus i command you to love one another if the world hates you remember that it has first had me as the fixed object of its hatred if you belonged to the world the world would love its own property but because you do not belong to the world and i have chosen you out of the world for that reason the world hates you bear in mind what i said to you a servant is not superior to his master if they have persecuted me they will also persecute you if they have obeyed my teaching they will obey yours also but they will inflict all this suffering upon you on account of your bearing my name because they do not know him who sent me if i had not come and spoken to them they would have had no sin but as the case stands they are without excuse for their sin he who hates me hates my father also if i had not done among them as i have such miracles as no one else ever did they would have had no sin but they have in fact seen and also hated both me and my father but this has been so in order that the saying may be fulfilled which stands written in their law they have hated me without any reason when the advocate is come whom i will send to you from the father's presence the spirit of truth who comes forth from the father's presence he will be a witness concerning me and you also are witnesses because you have been with me from the first chapter sixteen these things i have spoken to you in order to clear stumbling blocks out of your path you will be excluded from the synagogues nay more the time is coming when any one who has murdered one of you will suppose he is offering service to god and they will do these things because they have failed to recognize the father and to discover who i am but i have spoken these things to you in order that when the time for their accomplishment comes you may remember them and may recollect that i told you 
I did not, however, tell you all this at first, because I was still with you. But now I am returning to him who sent me, and not one of you asks me where I am going. But grief has filled your hearts, because I have said all this to you. Yet it is the truth that I am telling you, it is to your advantage that I go away. For unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world in respect of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin, because they do not believe in me, of righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will no longer see me, of judgment, because the Prince of this world is under sentence. I have much more to say to you, but you are unable at present to bear the burden of it. But when he has come, the spirit of truth he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak as himself originating what he says but all that he hears he will speak and he will make known the future to you he will glorify me because he will take of what is mine and will make it known to you everything that the father has is mine that is why i said that the spirit of truth takes of what is mine and will make it known to you a little while, and you see me no more, and again a little while, and you shall see me. Some of his disciples therefore said to one another, What does this mean which he is telling us? A little while, and you do not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me, and because I am going to the Father. So they asked one another repeatedly, What can that little while mean which he speaks of? We do not understand his words. Jesus perceived that they wanted to ask him, and he said, Is this what you are questioning one another about? My saying, A little while, and you do not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me? In most solemn truth I tell you, that you will weep aloud and lament, but the world will be glad. You will mourn, but your grief will be turned into gladness. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow, because her time has come. But when she has given birth to the babe, she no longer remembers the pain, because of her joy at a child being born into the world. So you also now have sorrow. But I shall see you again, and your hearts will be glad, and your gladness no one will take away from you. You will put no questions to me then. In most solemn truth I tell you that whatever you ask the Father for in my name, he will give you. As yet you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your hearts may be filled with gladness. All this I have spoken to you in veiled language. The time is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in veiled language, but will tell you about the Father in plain words. At that time you will make your requests in my name, and I do not promise to ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself holds you dear, because you have held me dear, and have believed that I came from the Father's presence. I came from the Father, and have come into the world. Again I am leaving the world, and am going to the Father. Ah, now you are using plain language, said his disciples, and are uttering no figure of speech. Now we know that you have all knowledge, and do not need to be pressed with questions. Through this we believe that you came from God. <laughs> do you at last believe? replied Jesus. Remember that the time is coming, nay, has already come, for you all to be dispersed each to his own home, and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have spoken all this to you in order that in me you may have peace. In the world you have affliction, but keep up your courage. I have won the victory over the world. Chapter 17 When Jesus had thus spoken, he raised his eyes towards heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that the Son may glorify thee, even as thou hast given him authority over all mankind, so that on all whom thou hast given him he may bestow the life of the ages. And in this consists the life of the ages, in knowing thee the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. 
I have glorified thee on earth, having done perfectly the work which by thine appointment has been mine to do. And now, Father, do thou glorify me in thine own presence, with the glory that I had in thy presence before the world existed. I have revealed thy perfections to the men whom thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them to me, and they have obeyed thy message. Now they know that whatever thou hast given me is from thee. For the truths which thou didst teach me I have taught them, and they have received them, and have known for certain that I came out from thy presence, and have believed that thou didst send me. I am making request for them. For the world I do not make any request, but for those whom thou hast given me, because they are thine, and everything that is mine is thine, and everything that is thine is mine and I am crowned with glory in them. I am now no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to thee. Holy Father, keep them true to thy name, the name which thou hast given me to bear, that they may be one, even as we are. While I was with them, I kept them true to thy name, the name thou hast given me to bear, and I kept watch over them, and not one of them is lost, but only he who is doomed to destruction, that the scripture may be fulfilled. But now I am coming to thee, and I speak these words while I am in the world, in order that they may have my gladness within them, filling their hearts. I have given them thy message, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I do not ask that thou wilt remove them out of the world, but that thou wilt protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Make them holy in the truth. Thy message is truth. Just as thou didst send me into the world, I also have sent them, and on their behalf I consecrate myself, in order that they may become perfectly consecrated in truth. Nor is it for them alone that I make request. It is also for those who trust in me through their teaching, that they may all be one, even as thou art in me, O Father, and I am in thee, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that thou didst send me. And the glory which thou hast given me I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may stand perfected in one, that the world may come to understand that thou didst send me, and hast loved them with the same love as that with which thou hast loved me. Father, those whom thou hast given me, I desire that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see the glory, my glory, my gift from thee, which thou hast given me because thou didst love me before the creation of the world. And righteous Father, though the world has failed to recognize thee, I have known thee, and these have perceived that thou didst send me. And I have made known thy name to them, and will make it known, that the love with which thou hast loved me may be in them, and that I may be in them. The End of Chapters 14-17 through 17. Recording by Mark Penfold